so much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and thank you uh, to Ms. Marka Edy for, you know, telling us what needs to be said, which is we need to move with the urgency that is needed for this crisis. I'm also incredibly grateful, uh, Mr. Chair knows this, uh, Chairwoman Waters from day one has, from the first day I entered into Congress, has said housing is infrastructure. And she reminds us of that every single day. So I'm really grateful for this hearing. I represent Michigan's 13th congressional district. More than half of the owner-occupied single family homes in my community are valued at less than $100,000. Our state lost more black homeownership than any other state in the country over the last two decades. I know the Urban Institute has found that it's actually more difficult for borrowers to get an FHA mortgage for a home valued at less than $100,000 than for a larger a loan larger than $100,000. Meanwhile, the Urban Institute has also found that three in four homes priced at or below 100,000 are purchased by all cash buyers and investors. So countless home buyers, particularly first time home buyers are being locked out of home ownership in the middle class. And this is hardly a problem exclusive to urban communities like the city of Detroit and, and so forth. It's Southeast, Texas and the Great Plains are also seeing a huge impact. And, you know, I worked with Chairwoman Waters and, of course, our, my amazing colleague, Representative Captor, on creating the Community Restoration and Revitalization Fund and the Build Back Better that directed federal funds towards reinvestment in old or abandoned housing stock across the country and rehabbing them into affordable rental units. Ms. Bailey, can you talk a little bit about how the federal down payment assistance or the creation of a community restoration and revitalization fund helps bridge the home ownership gap and reverse these trends? Thank you for the question. Indeed, the program would establish a competitive grant program at HUD to support the creation of affordable housing and community redevelopment um, in neighborhoods that are experiencing blight. We talked earlier about how our communities, including communities like yours in Detroit, have not recovered from the Great Recession. This is why the GSE's equitable housing finance plans are critically important, because what they are doing is providing liquidity for small dollar mortgage programs those pilots that would allow people in your communities to get access to the mortgage loans that are less than $100,000. The loans that our large scale lenders are refusing to make despite getting depository insurance. So we need these equitable housing finance programs because whole regions of the country are credit starved. So we need to do everything that we can to make sure those equitable housing finance plans pass, but we also need the Build Back Better Act. It is a compromise, $150 billion of targeted assistance, including the Community Restoration and Revitalization Fund, would bring much needed resources into communities all over the country that want to have a stake in an equitable recovery and for whom housing continues to be a challenge. It would generate thousands of jobs to take these actions. So marrying right. supply and demand together are the solution. You know, and Ms. Uh, Ms. Bailey, um, Mr. Mitchell, um, Mr. Zandi, I mean, do you have any other recommendations in regards to how I can help so many of my families? I mean, we're talking about particularly, you know, homes valued at less than 100,000. What are some, some policy recommendations that you may have for myself, my colleagues in the administration? Continuing to make sure the equitable housing finance programs are implemented. Um, the GSEs have to do them every three years. There needs to be accountability for those plans, so we need to know how they're actually delivering. They have broad public interest mandates for the protections that they get to make sure credit availability is available in every market, not only family, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, but also the federal home loan banks. Yeah. Great. You know, Mr. Zandi, really quick, are you concerned about the possibility that the Fed's monetary policy will lead to an even larger home building gap, increasing our shortage of housing and worsening some of the issues and crises that my families are going through in the 13th district? Yeah, it will. Uh, the, the higher rates, uh, you know, obviously push people into, they can't buy a home because they can't uh -huh. afford it. So they go into rental property, jacks up rents, all else being equal, and also affects uh, lending rates for construction and, and development. And so that affects the ability uh, of uh, uh, multifamily developers to put up property. So that you got, you got more demand, you got less supply that pushes up rents. And of course that hurts everybody. It hurts the renters. They can't, oh, and it hurts I mean, so, I, I really think the feds, uh, the reserve has taken a, a literally a sledgehammer uh, to the demand uh, with so many sectors. Uh, 
uh, working on this issue, so I, I, sectors of our economy, but especially housing. I uh, really appreciate this hearing, Mr. Chairman, and I yield. Thank you very much. The gentlewoman 